Hi guys, welcome back. The other day I was shopping for a ribbon in the UK and it was eight pounds. When I saw the price, I was like, what? And if that's my reaction for a ribbon, I can only imagine what your reaction will be when you see how much fees you have to pay to study in the UK. Because the fees for international students in the UK is anywhere from 11,400 pounds to 38,000 pounds with the average being about 22,000 pounds. Now, if you're Indian, that's about 23 lakhs, which is big money. Now, if you've got that kind of money lying around, well, no biggie, good for you. But for everybody else, if you'd like to know how to drop the price of studying in the UK by quite a bit, you're gonna wanna watch this video. In today's video, we're talking about the types of scholarships and what they have to offer the deadlines and how you can apply for the scholarship. I'm Ashika and on this channel we talk about moving across the world to study or for that job. Today we're talking about the UK and with that let's dive in. So every year a lot of students come over to the UK and from those students only a small percentage of them actually apply for scholarships to study in the UK. Now this can either be because they don't know about these scholarships in the first place or because they don't believe they'll qualify for it. But here's the thing there are a bunch of scholarships and a lot of them cater to other needs and not just academic needs so do yourself a favor and at least try and find out about them. In terms of the coverage, there are different types of scholarships available for students in the UK. Some of them cover part of your educational fees in the UK. Others offer full funding for your programs fees. They offer you your visa costs, your flight tickets, your living expenses, and some even go to the extent of providing you a budget to buy warm clothes. Now, with that in mind, let's further break down how these scholarships are structured. Now, unlike in the earlier days where scholarships are primarily meant for academically gifted students, today scholarships cover a wide variety of students. There are performance-based scholarships which are awarded to students who have performed exceptionally in extracurricular activities like music, sports, or even performing arts like drama or dance. Then, there are academic, merit, and excellence scholarships these are traditional scholarships that are awarded to students who have performed extremely well in academics. Then, if you haven't aced every subject, there's still hope because there are also subjects for those who have aced particular courses or subjects offered by relevant individual departments. They offer subject-specific scholarships. Then there are disability scholarships that provide support for international students with a disability, a long-term mental health condition, a learning difficulty or special needs. And then there are scholarships offered for refugees or asylum seekers who have fled persecution from their home countries in the form of tuition fee reduction or waiver or maintenance. So those are equal access or sanctuary scholarships. There are also research scholarships which are offered to students to pursue research in a specific field of their interest. And then there are industry-sponsored scholarships that private companies or organizations offer to students in the UK who are interested in pursuing careers in a specific field. But before I move ahead, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, now's a great time to do it. Hit the subscribe button now and click on the bell icon for notifications. Now before I move on, there's something you should know. When you move to the UK, you'll have to get student housing. And to be honest, finding student housing is nothing short of a challenge because, well, the country is going through a housing crisis at this point, apart from the other crisis. For 2024, 40% of all student accommodation will be booked by May because for the year 2024, students have already started booking their student accommodation. Amber is a great website to look for student accommodation and it also allows you to save up to £5,000 if you book now for the 2024 intake. Plus, there's a cashback of around £300 on some properties. So if you book your accommodation now, you can save around 45% versus around UCAS times. And the deal with early booking is that you can actually find places close to your university if you book early. And if you don't get your visa or you don't get an acceptance from your university, you can still get a refund with the deposit protection scheme. So you kind of have nothing to worry about. Now, if you'd like to know more, head over to the description below and click on the link and fill out the form. Now let's talk about how you can apply for a scholarship. So assume you've made up your mind that you want to apply for a scholarship, but you don't know how to go about it. Well, the first step in my opinion is to find out what options exist in the first place. Let's take the example of shopping. Now assume you're going shopping for a jacket. You're obviously not going to buy the first jacket you see, right? You're going to go and evaluate all of your options to see what options exist. Just like that, you gather information on what scholarships are available and which ones have deadlines that are approaching. To do that, you check out the scholarship website, the university website, you read blogs, you read reviews of people who have actually used these scholarships in the past and you basically try to find out as much as you can about it. Because the more you dig, 
the better you can craft your application. And notice I used the word craft and not fill out your application. Next up, you're going to want to evaluate the criteria. Now, I would not recommend that you blindly apply for every scholarship that you come across for one very simple reason. It eats into your time. Instead, use that same time to improve on those same applications or two or three or four applications that you have decided to submit. And the way to do this is to go through every single scholarship and very carefully look for the requirement that they have listed out against it. And this is where, depending on the scholarship, you'll find out what kind of grades you need to apply for this scholarship or what kind of awards you needed to have won in order to apply for this. As the next step, I would say create an Excel sheet because I kind of create Excel sheets for everything. But in this Excel sheet, you would mention what the scholarship is, which university it is for, what the award is, and very, very important, what the deadline is. And if these are scholarships that you are really, really serious about, I would go to the extent of creating calendar alerts on your calendar so that you know when the application dates are and you get reminded of it before the date arrives. And apart from this, I'd also say to create alerts for all of the individual tasks that you have to do for each of these applications in order to submit them, like writing your essays, getting your references. So there are actually time bound steps that you have to follow if you need to submit your application. Now, the next step, is doing the actual work. And you could either think of it as the most difficult step or the most challenging or interesting step. It's up to you. You'll have to have your applications ready, your essays nailed down, your academic records, your letters of recommendation, your IELTS scores, and a lot more ready. So I'm a very last minute person because I always feel I work really well under pressure. So I tend to leave scripting my YouTube videos for the last minute. But there's a reason why. Because if something goes wrong with one of my YouTube videos, if it doesn't perform too well, I can just go and make another one and another one after that. Unfortunately, you do not have that luxury. You don't get a second chance. So if your application does not wow the reader at first glance, the battle is lost. And then it's time for you to go get that loan. So you'll ideally want to have these essays and the other application details nailed down at least a couple of weeks in advance so that in case you wanted to make some changes, either based on the feedback that you've received or based on the extra reading that you've done, you have enough time to recraft the entire thing. And apart from asking your friends and your family and your faculty members for feedback on your applications, what you can also do is reach out to either current students or past students who have either been at this university or gone through this college ask them for feedback on your application and you can get in touch with them through LinkedIn. And to be very honest, if you're applying for multiple scholarships, something you need to remember is that each of these applications needs to be tailored for that specific scholarship. So yes, it is going to take you time and it is going to take effort, but it's absolutely going to be worth it. You're going to want to bring in your story. You're going to want to talk about what makes you who you are you're going to want to talk about your achievements. But at the same time, you're also going to want to showcase why you deserve this scholarship, why you need it, and what your plans for the future are and how you plan on giving back to the community because of this scholarship. Another really valuable point that you can add is describing how this scholarship would impact your life. But remember, it's extremely important that you stick to the word limit or your application might get rejected in the first round itself. And then the only thing left for you to do is apply. Now, at this point, you might decide to chicken out because you might feel that your application is not good enough. But let me tell you this, every single student who's going to be applying for this scholarship or any scholarship goes through the same thought process. So you pretty much have nothing to worry about because you've done all the work. So just go ahead and apply. Now, if you're wondering where you can find these scholarships, well, these are some of the websites that I recommend. There is the Scholars for Dev, and let's take the example of the Bristol University Think Big Scholarships. Like you can see, the deadline is the 26th of Feb for undergrads and the 29th of April for postgrads. They're offering £500,000, which is quite generous. And if you scroll down, you'll see what the scholarship can be used for. You can also see the link to apply. Then there's another website called Scholarship Roar. But you'll have to check the deadlines because some of the deadlines for this have passed, like the Chevening one, for instance. But then there's the Gates Cambridge Scholarship, which is still open to some applications, and there are a lot more. You can also check ukscholarships.uk and you can even check the British Council website. So these websites typically aggregate all of the scholarships because otherwise you have to go to each of the websites individually and check for details. So you should get most of your information here, but of course, feel free to dig around for a lot more. Now, here's the thing. When students move to the UK, a lot of them tend to make mistakes and a lot of these mistakes tend to be very expensive mistakes. You want to avoid that. Now, if you want to know what the mistakes are and how to avoid them, 
Watch this. <laughs>